Hey guys, Manish Kaplan here. Uh, wanted to show you guys an example of what you should do when you start losing your lane really hard, especially on Singe. This applies, you know, obviously the best to him, but when you just get absolutely crushed in your lane, um, how you're gonna avoid tilt, how you're going to make sure that you're still relevant in the game, and how to, um, especially, I guess, like, come back in a lane that is generally lost. In season 11, freezing in top lane is a really, really, really big deal. Um, enemy top laners will just basically permafreeze on you, especially ones like Irelia, the moment that you get behind. So this game is actually a great example of what to do when that happens and how to, um, I'm not going to say fully avoid tilt. No one is fully tilt proof. A lot of people hide it really well. Um, especially me, you know, I'm, I'm really guilty about this. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm definitely a bit of a tilter and I think that that's okay. You know, it's, it's fine to be a tilter. Um, just the way that you deal with it, I think is more important than actually like being one. Um, so here, we're just freezing against Irelia, uh, trying to fling her in a tower. She can actually dash out of the tower range like that with her Q before the tower locks onto her. So whenever you fling her into your tower, you have to be very careful that it's actually like well within the range instead of like just outside the range. And I learned that this game. So here, um, I fling her into tower again, go for the fight, which I probably shouldn't have even though she took a tower shot. The reason why I should not have done this is because she had fully stacked passive, I just die. So that's death number one. Um, Generally, one death in top lane is not the worst thing. Here, I'm going to actually TV back into top lane and try and push it in. Um, <clears throat> and so, one of, one of the, the good sides about this and the bad sides about this is that, yes, you know, I did have to TP in a lane, but hopefully now I can get the way pushing towards her. The reason why I was playing defensively earlier is because you don't really have the ability to fight Irelia in melee range, level 1. So... What ends up happening is you generally let her like push into you right um here so i'm i'm walking into the wave pushing it just trying to get the wave to into her tower to bounce it off of her tower basically um i noticed that we are going to it looks like we're rotating for crab so i see crab i see kane uh, i assume that Kali's gonna walk over to you that we fight this was a mistake by me i shouldn't have gone for this um but you know i, I figured that we would we would try and fight together i just try and kill the kha'zix it doesn't work at all because my Akali didn't have priority and the the cane was the cane was still on Raptor, so I shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. I, that's my second death. Now, if you look at the state of top lane, I'm absolutely just just fucked, um, because the wave state is frozen. Irelia is currently she has a strong freeze in a position where I have a hard time contesting it. The only hope that I have basically of breaking this freeze is if her wave is able to is able to DPS my wave because her wave gets there first, or if she just starts to auto attack and reset. There's a chance she just resets it. So what happens is her wave actually gets there uh, before mine does, and she starts to just push it. Uh, she could have actually held this, I think, a bit longer if she if she DPSed a bit slower, but that's fine. I think she just wanted to recall and, and buy a power spec item. Uh, so I'm going to let her go ahead and push up here. Just trying to absorb EXP when and where I can. Once you know your poison distance, you can see us like that, by the way. Walking a little bit back here. Actually couldn't click on her for the fling there. And no tower shot there as well, which sucks. So I've taken a, I've taken a lot of damage here. She's fully stacked passive, autoing me when she can. Yeah, I, I took like 300 damage from minions there too, which is unfortunate. The fling there again draws minions. Look at the minion damage here. The minions are just, just chunky. I mean, that's another like 150 right there. And then she just jumps on me and kills me. So that's three deaths. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeding to win. Uh, not really winning, but yeah, I I'm definitely feeding. So, the the best course of action for me here is because, like, it, in my mind, you know, when I'm when I'm actually playing through this game, you know, I obviously, like, I'm I'm kind of tilted, right? I'm thinking, wow, this sucks. I really is like so OP in lane. Um, I don't know what to do. Like, I, in the back of your mind, obviously, like, whenever you're playing enough games and you have experience in top lane, like, you do know generally what it is that you have to do to, like, come back in the lane. But when you're, like, experiencing tilt, your your brain, it doesn't work that way. Like, you're, you, you, at least for people like me, I don't know if people are super hard tilters. Some people are super hard tilters. And it's something that I've struggled with a lot over the course of playing League, but, like, your brain doesn't, like, go into the right headspace. So here, she flashes on me. Uh, she actually dashed on me there whenever I flung, so the fling went in the opposite direction, because the dash places her behind, so that's death number four. Now the lane's frozen again, so again, once again, I'm screwed. She's just farming me for kills at this point. She's like an 80 CS, I think, to 
my 25 CS or something like that. But uh, the the she could have actually perma frozen this, but she again chooses to push, which is fine. Um, there's ways to break the freeze, which I will show you when she actually does start hard freezing on me. But whenever you're like you, you go into like that super tilt mode, your brain doesn't like rationalize the way that it should. And and one of the keys I think, especially in season 11. One of the keys to helping avoid this type of tilt is just remembering that in Season 11, the game is very, like, bouncy, right? How many games have you guys played where it's just, like, you know, 100 kill slugfest, back and forth type of thing? Um, it happens very often, right? 100 kills, maybe a bit of an exaggeration, like 50 kill slugfest, you know, huge back and forth, like, both teams are duking it out. Sure, sure, one team may have, like, a slight lead or even a just big lead earlier into the game, but that doesn't mean that, like, you know, it's unwinnable. So dodge E there. As soon as I know that the E is dodged, um, and she knows the E is dodged, she's going to look for a freeze. Then I'm going to actually, uh, what did I do here? I walk around for, okay, here we go. So, um, if you watch the wave in top lane on the map, you can actually use that to, or in bot lane is actually better. You can use that to judge where the enemy top wave will be in Fog of War. So I know that I miss one minion here, but I grab the other five um, and then pull them down with my poison and just break the freeze here because I'm dragging them down. Then this fight, um, Kazakh shows up. I see Kane is low, but he's trying to uh, he's trying to smite blue for the last hit. He actually gets it, I believe. He levels up there, or no, he leveled up somehow. But Kazakh's got the blue. Don't know. So we're we're fighting Kazakhs. We're fighting, fighting, fighting. Uh, end up dying because again, I didn't see that Akali didn't have Pryo. So this is my bad. I think I actually pinged her here. Yeah. So so this is something that probably you know I shouldn't have done. In hindsight, that's like a really shitty thing to do to a person who doesn't have Pryo, right? But, like, the thing is, in, in my mind, I'm not, like, rationalizing correctly because even Kai says, yeah, she's like, well, GG. Um, in my mind, like, I'm not rationalizing it correctly because, like, when, when the tilt hits you, you know, it's it's hard to rationalize it. But once you, once you like, you know, go back and, and try and understand, you know, in post-game, you know, watch the replay about why that's happening and the ways that you can like fight back against it. I think one of the most important ways to like remember in season 11, and, and this applies to previous seasons too, but like just remember that there's a lot of comeback mechanics in the game. Shutdown gold is huge. Um, you know, there is also a bit a bit more comeback XP in the jungle as well. Not, not that much as people think, but it, it does exist more than what it was before. So there are comeback mechanics and just remember that like certain champions like Singed, right? This especially applies to Singed is you're just a, a weak laning champion. He really is. He is a strong team fighter. He's not a he's not a strong laner. Um, and like yeah, you can you can play lane with him, but uh, she has a freeze right there, so I'm gonna go to proxy to break it. This is what Singed is very good at, by the way. Once he has a, a little bit of AP, is he can just proxy to break freezes like this, and then it makes it like they can still hold the wave and not let it hit their tower, but like. You can basically make it so freezing is irrelevant if you have enough movement speed, which is awesome. Or sorry, uh, enough AP. So you have enough AP to clear the wave. But my, my point is that, remember that there, that there are comeback mechanics in the game for a reason. Um, I find that the, the root of my tilt, and I think this is true for a lot of people, the, the root of tilt for a lot of people, I find, um, is like a feeling of lack of control over the game. And I'll, I'll elaborate on that one second. So here I'm TPing bottom. This is this is my comeback into the game right here. So TP flank. Uh, Triss doesn't have flash. The Kazakh doesn't have flash either. Yumi let her jump on at me here. So Kazakh doesn't solo me. Then we just run him down with poison. Auto attacks. Kill him. Conquer. Had 176 AP there. 187 with the Dark Seal stack. Hell yeah, Yumi. Bat him around. Um, I find that the root of my tilt is actually just like... Uh, whenever I feel like a lack of control or a lack of ability to like impact the game, that's when I find myself to get the most tilted. So like whenever I'm just sitting in top lane, you know, I have like, I'm farming and then it's like, you know, 10 minutes and bot lane is zero and 15, right? Those are the games where I personally tilt the hardest or the games where I'm like zero and seven and no one else on my team is like doing anything to like, you know, do something somewhere else on the map if i'm just getting card camped or if i'm just dying and the jungler is like not forcing somewhere else right you know that that's where i find myself getting the most tilted and, and you know I, I fully admit again you know there's nothing i don't think that there's anything wrong with being a tilter it's just the way that you like 
like rationalize it and the way that you like compartmentalize it and, and the way that you deal with it. Um, and the way that I have been trying to deal with it, that's been working pretty well, is just remembering that, you know, there is a root cause to what I believe causes my tilt, and that's the feeling of a lack of control or a lack of, like, ability to impact the game, a lack of agency, basically. And you have to remember, like, you know, in League of Legends, a lot of games are going to be like that, where you feel like you don't have a way to impact the game, where you feel like you, you, you can't, like, have a control on the outcome. Um, just that's just the way the game is right certain certain roles certain champions have more influence over certain games than others right and some games you know you'll be you'll be top kingdom and some games you are more of like a top you know cesspool ses basically where nothing happens right so here I'm looking for a really TP I assume she's keeping in there uh, she has like she's actually uh, TP somewhere else I'm not sure exactly it was right there yeah um, because I got the uh, I got the Ooh. the little passive on her right before she TP'd but like some games are top kingdom some games it's not right some games it's jungle kingdom a lot of games are jungle kingdom some games are not you know um but that's like what causes my tilt i think it's important for you to figure out what causes like what's the root cause of your tilt genuinely like if if you if you are focused on improving and ranked and you know that you suffer from tilt or you are a tilter like it's very very important i think to figure out what causes your tilt and 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 understand that about yourself so whenever you're in the middle of a game and you can kind of feel it happening you can like you know remind yourself hey you know there's a reason why i feel this way and and that's just the way it is so that there's no point like you know being angry over it because the problem with with getting angry over it is that that anger and that frustration like carries over to your next games and that will ruin the rest of your games that you do play or it might just make you not want to play at all for the rest of the day and like if you're trying to grind ranked and grind elo right then that's kind of bad if you're just like um, not playing enough and then then you like lose your sharpness and then you play worse right so it's it is a frustrating game and you know i i understand it's a little bit odd to to you know be playing a game where you use like psychological tactics to remind yourself to like you know play better but like that's the nature of a competitive game i think whenever whenever you're playing a competitive game is just to remember that you know it's it's a it can be a very emotional like draining stressful and, and taxful uh taxful um I don't know what I was saying there. Uh, it can be a very emotional, emotionally draining and taxing, there we go, uh, process that you have to like kind of understand that about yourself if you are the type of person who is susceptible to that. Um, and so me being able to like kind of rationalize, hey, you know, I've been getting pretty tilted lately. What do I do about this? What's causing it? Oh, for me, you know, after I thought about it for a few hours, I find that, you know, I get tilted due to lack of control. So what, what's my thought process, right? Whenever I'm feeling that tilt, my thought process is basically, um, my thought process is basically, well, if I'm feeling that, then I'm going to have to remind myself that some, sometimes there's just not shit that you can do, but you should always be looking for the play that you can make, right? Always look for the play that you can make because that's how you're going to get back in the game. Now, Singe specifically, you know, I'm not a strong laning champion playing versus champions like Camille, you know, Irelia, Fiora, who are very strong laning champions. Now, what does my champion do that those champions have a harder time doing? Um, well, my champion can team fight like an absolute monster. That is that is the bread and butter of Singed. He is a strong team fighter. He is just really good at it. That's his like best best skill set, I think, is team fighting. Um, so whenever you see, you know, a team fight, you have to try and make sure that you attend because he is just, a, he is a good team fighter. On Singed, you have to be very, very careful not to over side lane. And what I mean when I say over side lane, and this is a big mistake that I've been making this season as well when I watch my replays, is, is over side laning means that you're spending too much time farming in the side and trying to like do damage to towers. Singed is not a split pusher. You shouldn't split push. The meta currently, as it stands today, is basically, you know, push a few push a wave or two and then roam and the reason why that is is because at least for singe is that your team your side lane your split pushing is not that good most champions will out 1v1 you in the side lane you're not that good of a 1v1 champion your damage is primarily aoe um which means that because your damage is primarily aoe that team fighting is really your bread and butter especially because your early game laning is is so like just kind of weak right yeah if you're ahead you can totally 1v1 the enemy top laner but how often are you going to be getting ahead versus opponents of like equal skill right um so team fighting is what is what my win condition generally is and as tilting as it is to like you know 
have lanes where you lose sometimes, especially this hard. You have to make sure that you're looking for those team fights. So right there, go for the glo the goofling on Irelia, peel her off of me. Um, and yeah, so like you have to remember what your win condition is. Remember that you know sometimes sometimes tilt happens. You know that's that is what it is. And it is okay to be a tilter, but what's more important is how you deal with it, how you rationalize it, um, compartmentalize it, and move on from it. And don't, don't don't get stuck on it, right? That's the super hard part, too, is not carrying that tilt over into, like, the next game that you play or the next several games, right? Oh, you know, you, you like, you go on a champion select and you're just... You, you know, like you have those people where they're just like, wow, last they, they type in chat, wow, last game, last game sucked, dude, I had this support, you know, he was such a feeder, I, you know, I'm, well, I'm, I'm gonna play this champion because I'm upset, you know, I've never played him before, I'm gonna be the best, like, uh, you know, they're just still, they're mentally, they're mentally stuck on the previous game and what happened there, and, and what the problem with that is they're not able to, like, use use their their mental processing to like fully take in you know all the new information that's being thrown at them in the new game because they're still stuck on the old game they're not they're not playing from from a fresh mind and that's really bad um because you're like i guess like uh what's what's a good word like you're you're oversaturating your brain with information that it doesn't need when you're trying to perform a task that doesn't require that information right because the, the 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 next game that you're playing, right, the game after whatever the tilter was, you don't need the info from what happened in the previous game. Like, try and learn from your mistakes, obviously, but that's it. You don't need to carry on like, oh my my you know mid lane flame me. You need to carry like, oh my bot lane was inter, like my, my jungle is, is noob. You don't have to carry that stuff, right? Just just carry. So here we're looking for the team fight. This is exactly what I was talking about before. Focus the Aurelia down, ground her, fling her away from my my uh, teammate, get a shutdown. Run through the enemy team with poison on. LeBlanc is forced to TP out or flash out because I had a um, really high, a heavy stack conqueror and poison right there. The uh, Kha'Zix actually dies to poison here, which is awesome. I proc a bunch of triumphs, get healed up. And yeah, so like the the, the team fighting there is what brings me back into the game. Basically, that's that's the turning fight, and, and now we start to like kind of fight on a bit more even ground. Um, but yeah, so basically, like you have to make sure that you are just always aware of what the the goal is right the the, the goal is basically like to, to climb and gain elo so if if you're stuck on what happened in the previous game <clears throat> and, and, and and honestly i'm guilty of this too you know it happens to everybody at some point if <clears throat> excuse me if you're stuck on what happened in the previous game then you're not thinking about your current game and and you're gonna like play worse because of it right and I know it's it, it it's so cliche when streamers are like, oh, you know, just just let go, let it go, whatever happened, like let it go, um, and that's hard. Like I I I completely agree. Like it's hard even for me. And and I've been playing this game at a very high level for, for a very long time, and it's still difficult, right? This is one of those things that I've always struggled with, um, is tilting and carrying on, you know, the shitty emotions from previous games. Um, there, I think that there's that there's two separate approaches that people can do with this. Um, the reason why I went Dead Man's Plate there, by the way, is because I wanted to try out uh, just having the move and speed second. Um, but th there, there's two different approaches, I think, that the way that people deal with this. Some people do their best to not take the stress on in the first place and just play the best that they can. This is probably the superior strategy. Uh, strategy in terms of dealing with, with Tilt is to just do your best to not let it get to you in the first place. You know, not all of us are built that way, though. <laughs> and I'm definitely not a person who's built that way. I'm definitely the type, of, the type of person who's like, wow, this sucks in the moment, and I try and deal with it later. If you can be super zen and just not let it affect you as much in the first place, by all means, good for you. That's what you should do. Fling the Kha'Zix here. You walked up a little bit too far. Chunk him out. Um, if you're the type of person who actually, you know, can deal with it in that way, you know, God bless, props to you. You are... You are definitely more zen than I am. I have to rationalize and I have to understand that some things, you know, just happen. And you have to, like, play your best regardless of that. That's how I have to rationalize it. And that would be strat number two. You know, strat number two is basically, oh, if you are a tilter and you know that you are a tilter, you have to start implementing strategies, like, into your into your thinking that will help you cope with that, that will help you deal with that. Um, and this, this, what I've talked about is just, like, kind of what I've been using lately. And it's been helping me a lot personally just to like not be as you know i guess like 
tilty, right? Because you're just you're trying to play for the team, trying to play for the uh, play for the team fights, not the lane. So here, uh, I'm maybe forcing. Uh, yes, I'm forcing. So I'm forcing. I'm going for the fling. Get the uh, get the karma. Yumi's on me. I think she's on me. I don't know where Yumi is. Yumi was detached. Rip. Did I kill Kha'Zix? I did kill Kha'Zix there, though. So that was like kind of a. It looked like a good fight, but that ended up not being. Oh, she's healing a lot. I was debating on continuing to fight her, but my fling was down when she jumped on Kaisa, so I couldn't. Um, but yeah, just making sure that like you're implementing the correct strategies to not be able to, or sorry, to be able to, you know, stabilize your your mental as much as possible, and you'll find that you 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 will win more games, and that you will come back more in games like this where you are stabilizing, right? And I know it sounds so cliche, uh, it, it, it's like that stuff that you see on the on the loading screen banner, right? Where where they're always like, ah, you know, uh, players who who type less win twenty percent more games, and you know, I don't think that that's a very accurate stat. You know, twenty percent. If you won twenty percent more games, you'd be rank one, right? Because most people hover around 50%, uh, or 51, even 50, 50, 50 to 53 is really average, I think, in terms of win rate. Well, yeah, that's the definition of average, is like 50%. But I, I, I digress. Um, the, the main thing, basically, is that for the majority of people, you know, when you're implementing these strategies, it's very important to remember that there's different conditions for each game. Don't carry on the tilt with you to the next game. Have a way to just help yourself let go of it, and you will find that you win more games, right? And it's absolutely true. As as cliche as it is, you will find that you win more games because you're you're dealing with that stress that occurs from teammates being idiots or from you having a bad game. You're you're dealing with that stress in a way that is conducive to helping you win games um and and that's a big thing right one, one of my things is like if i feel myself getting too tilted generally my rule is like uh three losses in a row or if i'm just feeling myself getting too mentally tilted i just stop playing for the day and i know it's difficult because we're all addicted to this game um but just trying to stop playing for the day so here again putting my rally as best i can just trying to get her off of my team I don't think that, yeah, that fight actually doesn't go too well for us. And this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. What what I what I shouldn't do is type at the Akali. Even though um, I, I think, I, th I know actually in hindsight, looking at the replay, that that I shouldn't type at the Akali. You know, we're all guilty of this sometimes. I, I, I think, I, you know, I said, why is my Akali back there? And my intention was to, you know, signal the fact that she should be helping us blow up Irelia. Um, that's not what happened. But like whenever, whenever you know someone's called out specifically like that, it, it it doesn't really help them, you know. So it's like you're just putting pointless stuff into the chat, and you shouldn't be doing it. We're, we're all guilty of it, right? Again, you know, uh, what was that thing that that people say in the Bible? Let he who uh, is without sin cast the first stone, uh, <laughs> or something. Does that apply here? I don't know. Maybe in the comments, right? Don't judge me. You know, every every everybody's guilty of this. Um, so I asked, you know, can you, this is, this is, I think, a little bit better. Um, this is actually more of, like, a strategic type. Like, can you just blow up the Irelia, you know, don't dive in because we have to, we have to kill the Irelia, right? That's, that's different. Um, I could have phrased it a bit better. I could say, hey, we should try, instead of diving, just try to, like, one-shot the Irelia because she's the biggest threat. And, you know, I'm, I'm rationalizing it by, you know, saying that Triss is one in seven. What's the point of us, you know? chasing after the Triss, so we can just go for the Irelia, who is way bigger, a uh, way bigger threat. So here, uh, waiting for my ultimate to TP. <laughs> Again, should not have done that, should not have hit FF, especially when the game is super winnable. But my my tilt definitely took a, took over a bit this game, which I, I honestly think is important to talk about and important to recognize. Here, Yumi just goes huge with me here, uh, getting Triumph Proxy and Yumi heals. The Irelia chased me. Couldn't kill me because of the Yumi, because of the Rally slow, because the Deadman's plate doing work. Then we just run down the Baron, kill it. So here, yeah, it, like the, the tilt definitely takes over a bit, right? Um, and you know, I'm doing my best in the middle of the game to you know tell myself, you know, there's a win condition, play for the win condition, look for the team fights. But again, you know, it's hard, it's it's difficult, especially when you're trying to do your best to. Uh, to win and you feel like the game is kind of crumbling, right? You feel like all the effort that you're putting in is pointless. 
Um, and that's another thing uh, that I, I think has been helping me lately is recognizing like, hey, you know, the effort that you're putting into these games, even if you're losing, is not pointless, right? You're always learning something, at least a little bit from each game. Um, and one of those things that is frustrating is feeling like that your time is being wasted, feeling like, you know, all this effort that you're making to win the game is is useless. Um, and, and, and that's what led probably to me spamming the FF out there is just feeling like my time was being wasted because we're doing, you know, dumb stuff as a team. Uh, in hindsight, obviously, easier to rationalize. I probably shouldn't have said it, but hey, you know, it, look, it happens. You know, what do you want me to say? That's just that's how it goes. But then again, you know, going back through and looking at replays like this and trying to understand it from from a different perspective, uh, the post game perspective with hindsight helps just helps remind me as well. Like you know, hey, this is important. Like we shouldn't be acting this way because you can kind of see through the through watching the replay like this is that you don't necessarily always. Let's phrase this differently. You're not always put in as helpless of a position as you think that you are, right? And looking through replays like this is a great way to see that. Maybe there's something that you haven't thought of that you can do in a game. You know, maybe maybe there's a certain rotation that you're making incorrectly. Maybe there's a certain, like, maybe you're just farming a bit too much. Maybe you're not farming enough, right? Um, maybe you're not grouping enough maybe you're splitting too much maybe you're not splitting enough maybe you're grouping too much right it really just depends maybe you're not peeling properly maybe you're not recognizing your win condition there's always maybe something that you could improve on and the problem with tilt is that it it prevents you from like seeing that right um which is why i think it's so 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 important to like help curb your tilt especially for me as well this is a great example right so even just through watching this game, I'm thinking to myself, wow, there's a lot of things that I that I can do that I'm rationalizing in post-game that I wasn't really able to do in-game. Now bear in mind, I actually think I did a pretty good job in this game of staying calm. Um, but, you know, that being said, even though I stayed pretty, uh, pretty well in calm in this game, you just have to make sure that I'm able to do that every game, right? Able, if you're able to do, like, at least I think this level of... of I guess curbing your tilt, then you will you will win a lot more games, and that's, that's very important this season because of comeback mechanics, because of how important it is to climb, because of how important it is to build your skill set. So here, rocket belt under Relia with Dead Man's Plate, catch her. She actually kills me, but because we kill her, their team doesn't really have that many damage threats afterwards that are relevant. Um, and then my colleague just kind of I think jumps in. Q one shot, Q one shot, Q one shot, because that champion is fair. Kaisa with Yumi can't kill her. Q one shot, Q one shot. Why are they gonna nerf a Kali? What is that? What even just happened there? Who knows? <laughs> Hard to say. So they're calling for the end, and then my team goes mid and ends the game. I actually think I actually pinged them back because I didn't think that they would be able to end the game, but yeah, they had enough damage. It was like within the margin of like three seconds, I think, is that they were able to end the game between um, people like being able to hit them. But yeah, you, like. Remember that the, the tilt will only hurt you more in the long run. You have to be able to let go of it. Um, and those are just kind of some of the strats that I use to help myself let go of it. And, you know, help myself, like, improve. Because that is a form of improvement. You know, learning to curb your tilt is improvement. Like, don't don't think that it's not. That is a skill set. That is an absolute skill set that you need to be able to use to help yourself improve. And hopefully this talk was helpful for, helpful, excuse me, helpful for some people that I know among us are definitely tilters myself included but the only way that i think we can get better about it is to recognize it and try and defeat it so hope you guys enjoyed this one a little bit different but we'll see how it goes have a good one guys